Hungarian folk tales. The Water Fairy. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there lived a miller, and the miller had a wife. They had a fine big mill, and they earned their keep and passed their days. There was just one thing that caused them grief, and that was they had no child. And they grew poorer and poorer every day until they had nothing at all. The poor man lamented night and day that a curse had been laid upon them. Off he went one evening and sat by the mill pond. There he wept. All at once he heard a voice. Listen, poor man, I'll help you in your troubles. I'll make you richer by far than ever before. All you have to do is give me the living creature that you have not got at home. So the poor man thought to himself, what is it that I haven't got at home? Perhaps a dog? Perhaps a cat? What could it be? Right you are, I agree. The poor man cheered up and set off for home. He was still on his way when his servant came running towards him. Quickly, Master Miller, the mistress has just given birth to a fine, healthy boy. Well, now, the miller ran all the way back to the mill pond. Come here, come here, you evil spirit. You have taken my child. But no one appeared. Home he went and told what had happened. They threw their arms around each other and wept and wept. What was going to become of their child? When would that voice take him away? raise the boy as the light of their lives. They never ever let him near the mill pond. And when he grew older, they told him that he was not to go there because the water fairy would carry him away. And the boy never went there. He avoided the place altogether. Now they became wealthier than anyone in the village before or since. Where they laid down a florin, the next day there were two. Time and tide went by and they sent their son to a master woodman so that he would be a forester. So taken was the master with the lad, so quick and clever he was, that the master gave him his own daughter in marriage. The young man went all through the forest hunting. One day he saw a fine stag. He aimed at the stag, but the stag vanished clean out of sight. Off he went again on the following day, and once again the stag was enticing the young man. And so it went on for three or four days. His wife spoke to him. Where is it you go every day, neither eating or drinking, only concerned for your forest? But don't go near the mill pond, just so that no trouble will be for you. I never go that way, my dear. I only go hunting in the forest. Once again he set off, tracked the stag and brought him down. He thought of skinning it, but in skinning it, he got covered in blood, so he decided to go to the river and wash himself. There he set down his cap and his satchel. But once he put his two hands into the water, two mighty arms rose out of the water, fastened themselves around his neck and dragged him in and under. His good wife was waiting for him at home. She ran to the forest to the mill pond and there she saw his cap and his satchel. Dear God in heaven, what my father-in-law warned about has happened. Up and down the edge of the water she raced. Give me back my good husband, water fairy. But the water was silent. She ran and ran until tiredness overcame her and she lay down and fell asleep. In her dream she saw, not far away, a shack in which there lived an old woman who knew many, many secrets. She awoke, and just as in her dream, off she went to the shack. She knocked at the door and spoke of her problem in floods of tears. There, there, my dear, said the old woman. When the moon is full, off you go to the place and sit at the edge of the waters. I'll give you a brush, and with it you must brush your hair. 
So the young wife waited until the moon became full. She went to the edge of the waters, let loose her hair, and began to brush it. And then, all of a sudden, her husband stuck his head out of the water, but he said not a word. And then he vanished again to the watery depths. She went home and told the old woman what had happened. The old woman said, tomorrow evening you must bring a spinning wheel with you, and there you must spin. And so she did. She brought a spinning wheel, sat there at the spot, and began to spin. And when she spun, once again the water frothed and her husband appeared up to his waist. But again they were not able to exchange a word between themselves. Off you go, dear girl. This is the third night. On this flute you should play a sweet, sad tune. Then you'll see what happens. And so it was. The young wife sat there on the same spot and played. At first the water started to froth and in she jumped and embraced her husband. But then such a storm blew up that her husband was carried off to one shore and the wife to the other. They were thrown so far apart that she stayed on one and he stayed on the other. Then the man took work as a swineherd and the woman as a cook. The swineherd brought the pigs out to feed every day and the woman brought food at midday to her master in the meadows. When she brought the food to the master, she saw that there was a swineherd off in the distance. So she walked towards him and they began to speak. And as they spoke, the young woman asked the man where he had come from. And the man began to tell her of how he had been born and how the water fairy had carried him away and how he'd been parted from his darling wife. And as he told all these things to his own wife, her eyes opened once again and she saw that he was her husband. Then they embraced and kissed each other sweetly and went home. They had many, many children and they all lived happily ever after. This is the end of my tale.